and of course the elders who are in attendance, I'm going to ask you not to applaud. And I know that seems weird, <laughs> but we have a lot of people to thank. And if I have to wait for the applause every time, this could get long. So uh, I want to make sure that... Absolutely. Okay, let's get to this. Um, so first of all, let's talk about uh, Paul Lefebvre. Thank you so much, MPP, MP, my apologies, MP. Um, also, Mark Saray, who's not here today, not able to be here. We want to acknowledge their role in this. Um, some generous, very generous donors, including Miss Lily Fielding and her family members, Jamie Wallace, Jeff Wallace, Gord Wallace, Craig Fielding, Katrina Rustalo, I hope I got that right, Jerry Perdue, Cameron Perdue, and Angela Perdue. Yes, we can applaud for that, by all means. I'd like to acknowledge our sitting mayor, Brian Bigger, for the contributions of the city. I'd like to acknowledge the members of our board of governors who work tirelessly every day for this university. Chair Jennifer Witte, Claude Lacroix, Sonia Del Messier, Peter Xavier, Suzanne Corbet, Stuart Harshaw, uh, past board chair, Carolyn Sinclair, and of course, there are many others who are in this audience who deserve to be acknowledged, and I'm sorry, I feel that I may have missed a few names. So let's acknowledge all the members of our board who, past and present, who've been part of this. Our committed partners who, partners who were actually part of the original pitch, representatives from Greater Sudbury, Sudbury Utilities, NORCAT, the City of Greater Sudbury, the Chamber of Commerce, CoverGall, Stantec, so many other companies, representatives here from the employers who launch our graduates' careers, Best Tech, Valet, Hardline, Glencore, Siemens, DST Group, Tesk, many others, McLean's Engineering, and our colleagues from Cambrian College, Algoma University, NORCAT, representatives of school boards, high schools, you all, make this place what it is. So thank you each for being here. Let me now call upon Laurentian's interim president and vice chancellor, Pierre Zundel, to expand on how this fantastic building came about. Thanks, Alex. It's truly an honor to be here in this building today. Quelle belle journée, quel beau moment pour l'université. Shtataha, Abjagwanishin. This is not merely about the construction of a great building. This is about great people who came together around a vision. It's about dedicated individuals, really the perfect mix of individuals who came together and collaborated in order to take advantage of an extremely narrow window of opportunity and expanded it beyond its original scope to make that vision real. And this amazing building is the result of that teamwork. Le premier pas fut réalisé il y a presque quatre ans. Le 15 septembre 2014, le Conseil des gouverneurs a approuvé une proposition d'un plan de croissance pour l'école de génie et de euh, euh, pardon pour l'école de génie et la construction d'un espace de recherche qui y était rattaché. En avril 2015, le gouvernement d'Ontario nous a demandé d'identifier nos priorités en matière d'immobilisation. Par la suite, le comité exécutif a approuvé un plan identifiant comme projet prioritaire l'édifice de recherche, d'innovation et de génie. That's when it all began, an idea germinating slowly around a need and well-outlined priorities. And with a great leader at the helm in the person of our former Laurentian president and vice chancellor, Dominique Giroux. Dominique, we were not ignoring you. <laughs> we were not ignoring you in the, in the original introductions. We were just waiting, waiting for the right moment. And I think we need to acknowledge Dominic, who had the foresight and the courage to dream big, to plan ahead, to lay the foundations for this great project, which advances education, innovation, and research. Merci, Dominic. And so it began. 
In early 2016, when the federal government announced the Strategic Infrastructure Fund, what we all call SIF, uh, Dominic worked with Universities Canada to make sure to find out whether or not we were eligible. And then we learned in early April that we had 18 days to complete our submission. Now, Sudbury's a community that's used to doing impossible things. You know, think about, think about Science North and many of the other community projects that have gone on here. So, you know, this is another one of those Sudbury impossible things where we had 18 days to plan, to find the matching funds for, and to get approval for this, this project. Alors, pour plusieurs d'entre nous, les journées qui suivirent furent démesurément courtes et occupées. Le fonds pour l'infrastructure stratégique était en sorte la réponse à nos prières. C'était l'occasion de construire une infrastructure dont nous avions grandement besoin. Nous devions donc nous assurer de ne rien manquer. There are so many people who contributed to this effort. Our AVP Research, Craig Fowler, our previous Vice President of Administration, Carol McCauley, who unfortunately couldn't be here today. Our EVP facilities, Brad Parks, had his experienced eye over the whole project. Mitch Seguin, who played a critical role in coordinating the capital demands. Joanne Musico, our former communications director, who held the pen, and so many others. An amazing effort by the Laurentian team. But the contributions to this project were not only from our own employees. Our successful pitch would also include the support of the community. And somewhere in the middle of those 18 days, we held a breakfast with more than 50 community leaders. We explained the project. We, we received more than 50 testimonials from community organizations and members for it after that breakfast, for our students, for our programs, for our research, for our university. And I have to acknowledge the work of our Director of Development, Christy Russo, and our whole advancement team for their phenomenal coordination of these community stakeholders. And then there were private citizens who stepped up to the plate for, them, for us. Among them, Jamie Wallace and Jerry Perdue, who moved swiftly to make significant pledges of financial support for the project, as well as advocating for us in the community. You know, to honor their financial contribution and their leadership in the community um, and, and the leadership of the whole Fielding family, the building will be known as the Cliff Fielding Research Innovation and, and Engineering Building. And it will house the Jim Fielding Innovation and Commercialization Space. And thanks to a donation from the Purdue family, it will also be the home to the Noreen E. Purdue Central Analytical Facility. We're very thrilled to be able to, to name those spaces. We say in our new strategic plan that relationships are our priority. And in the, in the community support that we saw for this project, we really see the power of those relationships. I do want to take a moment, though, in the course of our celebrations to especially thank Lily Fielding and her family. <laughs> there are many members who are here today representing the Fielding, Purdue, and Wallace families. And I just ask you to please all to stand up if you can, and please join me in recognize their outstanding contribution to making this a reality. So to come back to my story of this project, at the end of those amazingly short 18 days, we had to go back to the board to seek approval for the project. And with that, what I'm going to do is turn over the podium to the chair of the Laurentian University Board of Governors, Jennifer Whitty, to pick up the story from there. Merci, Pierre. Um, I just want to take a moment to tell you what an extraordinary vantage point I have as I look out on the crowd and all of the spaces being fully utilized in this wondrous space. 
And so you look amazing. <laughs> and this building is rather quite amazing as well. So I'll pick up the story where Pierre left off. This proposal uh, came to the board um, as part of a special meeting, one of a series of rather extraordinary meetings that we had um, throughout uh, the summer months when we'd finished our regular calendar. And it was um, incredibly exciting for us and also uh, I think took a fair amount of courage and imagination to appreciate the opportunity ahead of us and to be bold in terms of what Laurentian University was proposing to the federal government. And I think um, absolutely uh, we can recognize that the boldness and the confidence that the community had through these 50 proposal or um, uh, letters of support in our submission, um, the confidence of private and public sector donors demonstrated uh, to the funders that Laurentian was absolutely ready and worthy of an investment that was beyond our notional share. So a university of our size, we were counseled, should not be asking for as much as we did. And not unlike working with legal counsel, you receive the advice and then you make a decision that may or may not reflect the advice. And I say that with affection for our lawyers. <laughs> and so it, um, it's truly remarkable, the uh, work that went into it, the demand that created the need for this space, not only for our engineering students who are building machines and winning awards and competing, and uh, having to do some of that work off campus. It also creates a space and a synergy opportunity for our faculty researchers, our grad students, and it allows for conversations and collaboration to happen in one um, unit, in one physical environment that is part of the heart of our campus. And so I'm very pleased um, to also report to you that not only were we bold, not only was this an ambitious project, not only have we been extraordinarily blessed in the investment um, from families such as the Fielding, Wallace and Purdue families, as well as um, private sector partners, this project was delivered on time and on budget, which... which is no small task, uh, as many folks know. And not only is it on time and on budget, but more importantly, and this is something that I heard um, from board members when we had a sneak peek in June before our meeting, and something that I heard from many of uh, the colleagues and uh, business acquaintances that I saw already this morning, not only was the quality there in terms of being on time and on budget, the thoughtfulness that has gone into the programming of this space so that it will serve the needs of the institution today and be adaptable to the creativity and the needs and the research that we haven't yet imagined um, is even more important from my perspective and something that I heard in the board's feedback. And so I wanna take an opportunity to um, acknowledge the work of Sheila Mendez and Jocelyn Maillard who have led the project for the university and uh, certainly they didn't do it alone and I probably am embarrassing them just a little bit by singling them out but I absolutely want to acknowledge their leadership and the work of the steering committee whose input helped inform the programming of the building and so when there were decisions to be made when there were trade-offs between this space or that functionality um, I think the outcome speaks for itself. So I'd ask all members of that steering committee to stand and be acknowledged. Thank you. A uh, few other things that I actually have in a script that I've not followed. Um, I would want to share with folks that uh, Sudbury-based uh, architects Yellowega, Belanger, Salach uh, designed the building, M. Sullivan and Sons built the building, and as we mentioned, our capital team pulled it all together. Uh, rien de tout cela ne serait arrivé cependant sans la direction et l'engagement de nos députés, Paul Lefebvre et Max Serret, Donc, j'invite uh, maintenant Paul à prendre la parole. Merci.
Merci beaucoup, Jennifer. It's, um, as you were saying, it's a great vantage point to be here. This is an amazing day, an amazing building. I was here uh, about a year ago touring in, in the first construction phase, and uh, obviously things have drastically changed, and this is, uh, it almost makes you feel like you want to go back to school, kind of. But, uh, but for students and teachers and researchers, this is a phenomenal investment in Sudbury and in Northern Ontario. Donc, merci beaucoup de me recevoir aujourd'hui. C'est toujours un honneur d'être ici sur votre campus. Je suis ici souvent, ça me fait toujours grand plaisir. Euh, J'aimerais reconnaître également le maire de Sudbury qui est avec nous aujourd'hui, monsieur, euh, monsieur le directeur par intérim, monsieur Zundel, merci beaucoup pour votre accueil et tout le monde du conseil d'administration. Mark sends his regrets. He's at an international meeting. He really wanted to be here, but it's so tough to coordinate everybody's uh, schedules. So we had to move ahead because this building has to go to move ahead. And the students have already started, which is an awesome, awesome feeling. The, it's also an honor and pleasure for me um, to be with all of you on the traditional territory or the Etik Mishing Anishinaabek for this special occasion. I also want to recognize the Purdue family for your investment in our community. You know, giving back is, uh, we are so lucky to have families like, like yours that give back. And to the Wallace and, and Feeling family as well, we are generous contributors to all different projects at different levels. We are very happy and proud to have you among us. I know Mrs. Fielding, you are here. I hear you are an, an unforgiving bridge player, even at the age of 102. <laughs> However, we are extremely, extremely uh, happy of your giving nature in our community. So thank you all for being here and what you have given us. Merci. We are here today to celebrate a success story, a story of hard work, dedicated partnerships, and a shared vision for Sudbury as a center of innovation. Our government's first budget in 2016 laid out $2 billion in funding through Industry Canada for research and innovation at post-secondary institutions with an historic program and an historic opportunity. It is called, as you heard, the Strategic Investment Fund, acronym SIF, a joint program between Industry Canada, provincial governments, and research institutes such as Laurentian. As we rolled out the program, I called Dominic. I said, this is coming along. Get ready. I also called Boreal and as well as the Cambrian College leadership teams. This was a huge opportunity, and we have to act fast, as you heard, 18 days. But at the same time, we knew that this was coming down the pipe, so our job was to make sure that we were alerting and making sure that stakeholders were aware of what was coming in. As it happened, Laurentian had an ambitious project in mind, almost too ambitious for the SIF program that was created. So we worked with then MPP Glenn Thibault to raise the ceiling to accommodate Laurentian's project. Not long after that, Greg Fergus, then Parliamentary Secretary for the Ministry of Industry, Science, Technology, MP for Hal Elmer, came here and visited Laurentian for Research Week. He left very, very impressed in now being one of our champions for us in Ottawa. And later that summer, I welcomed the minister himself, Navdeep Baines, to Sudbury to show him around and explain our ambitions to him and show him the amazing innovation and research that was going on in Northern Ontario. And of course, now we all know the results. Almost two years ago today, I had the honor with Mark of announcing a $21 million federal investment for a new research innovation and engineering hub right here at Laurentian. Cette contribution fédérale à la hauteur de 21 millions de dollars représente plus du tiers du coût du projet de 60 millions. I know for some in the room it is almost at the same time as another investment. So this one is a bit smaller than the other one. So we had announced an investment in Metal Earth of 49 million dollars. So those are pretty uh, exciting times. So, but I digress. Uh, <laughs> but as we all know, that's why we are all here today. The Strategic Investment Fund is a historic down payment on the government's vision to position Canada as a global center for innovation. Our government believes that scientists and engineers who lead groundbreaking discoveries and innovations play a big role in growing jobs in our country's knowledge economy. Our government's goal is to ensure that federal funding for fundamental science supports researchers and scholars so they can discover and innovate in ways that improve the lives of all Canadians. And this is exactly the kind of research that propels jobs and economic growth in Canada. En soutenant la recherche de pointe aujourd'hui, nous créons plus de perspectives d'emploi 
et nous dotons les Canadiens et Canadiennes des aptitudes nécessaires pour les postes de demain. These partnerships are transforming Canada to a world leader in turning ideas into solutions, turning science into technologies, turning skills into jobs, and turning startup companies into global successes. The Cliff Fielding Research Innovation and Engineering Center will reinforce and enhance the conditions for innovation and long-term growth. In turn, this facility will play a major role in keeping Sudbury's economy globally competitive. It will support our current and future generations of young people as they study for, train for, and create the high-value jobs of the future. By opening this new building, we are continuing Laurentian's journey to excellence and continuing Sudbury's path to prosperity. And I'm extremely proud to say that this is the first CIF project completed in Canada. Félicitations. And I have to add that as a politician, when you hear that a project is on time and on budget, <laughs> there's nothing better that sounds to your ears than that. <laughs> so clearly the partners here today share the same vision to make Sudbury's innovation ready. Ready for, to spot opportunities, ready to imagine possibilities, and ready to generate new ideas. Je termine en félicitant l'équipe de la Laurentienne et son recteur Pierre Zundel, car l'Université Laurentienne a le vent dans les voiles. Le centre de recherche d'innovation et d'ingénierie sera maintenant réalité. Félicitations, Chimiguch. Merci. So that's how we got here. It's been a remarkable journey. Now we turn our minds to the future, to what this building will be, what it will provide for our students, for our researchers, for our faculty members. And with that in mind, I would like to call on Marcus Timisk, Sandra Dorman, Gillian Schultz, and Giselle Roberts to join me up here on the stage. To let us know a little bit about what each of the aspects of this room will entail. Marcus? There he is. Thanks, Alex. So my name is Marcus Timusk. I'm the director of the Barty School of Engineering. And I can't begin to express how proud and excited I am to welcome all of you into this amazing new space. Um, it, it's difficult to overstate how uh, amazing and how amazed the students are when they see what they have ahead of them. I wanted to also point out that today we have uh, Terry Gaffney here, Professor Terry Gaffney, the gentleman in the bow tie over there who incidentally uh, taught that one of the first classes in the School of Engineering back at the University of Sudbury this week, 60 years ago today. So, <clears throat> yeah. so great to see him here. So our, our school in the past 10 years has been on an amazing trajectory. We've grown from about 100 to 700 students uh, in what uh, were uh, challenging conditions, I'll say, because those spaces from way back when were the same as they were uh, only a couple of years ago. Um, our, it wouldn't be a stretch of the imagination to say spaces were tight. We had students with projects in the trunks of their cars, um, lockers, but yet still these students continue to amaze us with their achievements. Uh, we continue to win awards um, with remarkable things such as uh, earning uh, national recognition in the International Mine Rescue Competition, so first place in that, and you'll see the mine rescue students in the lab, mining machinery lab over there, who are very excited to show you their equipment uh, that we got donated. Um, and we've got students who had won the, the International Lunabotics Competition, National Engineering Awards, the list goes on. So uh, because of these successes, our employers have recognized this excellence, which is reflected in uh, having some of the best numbers, uh, I think the top in Ontario for post-graduation employment uh, in their field of choice. Uh, so this, this is something that um, it, we're really proud of with our students. But despite um, despite those challenges, here we are today. So what does this building mean to the School of Engineering? I think we finally have a space that lives up to the potential 
of our faculty, students, and the research that Laurentian can show. So I'm really proud of that. So when you tour the engineering spaces uh, on the ground floor, what you'll see today uh, is a facility which is in some ways an empty canvas because our next step is to equip these labs with, with state-of-the-art equipment. Um, and thanks to support from the Barty family, Hardline Solutions, and I Am Gold, we can now fill out these spaces with some of the best equipment that you'll see uh, to train engineers and to, and to do some of these important things that engineers need to do in order to prove out these theories and apply the, the practical. Um, so, uh, very happy about that. So furthermore, furthermore I, I wanted to let you know that we have uh, space, the mezzanine space as we call it, up top the first floor, which will be fitted out uh, in the next year, um, thanks to the support of IM Gold, which will be student space uh, for graduate students, breakout rooms for undergraduate students, and rooms for clubs. So that's another chapter which is going to unfold very shortly. I'd also like to quickly thank the generous uh, donors like the Fielding family, uh, Wallace and Purdue families, and Barty families, who continue to believe in our students believe in our university and believe in our school. We'll continue to make you proud. So finally, I'd like to direct your attention to the display over here. Um, and this is, uh, these are what we affectionately call the Paxi carvings. We have some members of the Paxi family here. Um, and so these were, these were carved by Charles Paxi, who was an employee uh, at, at INCO and a great artist. Um, and uh, they're finally in a place where they're, they're at their deserved prominence. <coughs> I'm actually, this is true, I'm actually told that our collection is almost complete. Uh, it's missing one, uh, one piece. You see almost all of them there. It's called Shift Boss, and it was last seen in the president's office two years ago. So, <laughs> I, I'm not, Dominic, I didn't see you bring anything with you today, but, uh, yeah, I'm not pointing any fingers. Um, so, but we're very happy to, to show these carvings. And we have our former uh, uh, te technologist and senior statesman, Lionel Rudd, there, who'd be happy to explain to you about the history of the carvings. So in closing, I'd like to welcome all of you here. And thank you very much for, for making such a great showing. And um, I think the architects, uh, and Louis Belanger in particular, made such a great job of an open, uh, welcoming building. So we hope that you can come in for years to come and see how we use this great space and develop into it. So thank you very much for your support. Okay. Hi, my name is Sandra Dorman. Thank you uh, for all coming today to celebrate with us. It's great to see so many people here. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm the director of the Centre for Research and Occupational Safety and Health, which is we more affectionately call CROSH because it's shorter. Um, CROSH is one of 14 research centres on campus, and I'm guessing some of you haven't heard of CROSH, and, and I'm guessing that many of you couldn't name the 14 researchers centres on campus, which is really a shame because the research centers provide amazing opportunities. Uh, first and foremost for students to give them unique opportunities for training and learning, but also for the community. Research centers are poised to help community members solve their pressing problems. Um, and so really one of the features of this building that I wanna highlight is the research hub, which is right above us here in purple. Um, and what the research hub does is a number of things that are going to help profile these research centers and really um, get more students involved and more community members uh, involved. So um, first and foremost, it does that because of its location, right? Just walking by a space, you're gonna be able to um, recognize and actually if you go in there today there's the list of all the centers now so you can see you know what are what are the centers that we have here um, but it's also going to allow for the students within the centers to come together and have formal and informal meetings as well as between the centers to come together and have meetings um, CROSH, for example, has student members in computer science and engineering and social work and human kinetics. Um, this provides a central location for all of those different disciplines to come together and have discussions about a problem. 
Um, likewise, it's going to bring the centers opportunity to tackle those problems. So. Um, We've already actually started discussions. We're going to start uh, monthly lunch and learn sessions where the centers members can come together, share ideas, and it's always interesting, you know, when when um, a completely different discipline hears about a problem and brings a real fresh perspective to it. Um, so we appreciate the space for that uh, reason. But I also want to highlight that that space is also a meeting space for community members, right? I think it's important for communities to engage with their academic um, um, centers within their communities. But also, if you've got a big problem that you're trying to solve, it's important to have a neutral space to have that discussion. And I'll use the example of CROSH again. We represent workers, uh, workplaces, government organizations, safe work associations, and we regularly bring those groups together to have discussions. And if you're really going to tackle a big problem, it needs to be in a place where everybody feels comfortable speaking their mind and working it through. So the research hub space here is going to provide that um, as well. And the last thing I want to kind of point out about that space is it's not a coincidence that across the hall is the innovation and commercialization space. When you go up here and look around, you'll see it's really um, designed to be like a think tank, right? There's lots of whiteboards. People are going to come together and we're going to, you know, brainstorm problems, share those problems, and then amazingly, we can walk across the hall and say, hey, Daryl, hey, Giselle, we had this great idea. Um, do you have an engineering student who could build this widget for us? Do you have a computer science student who could maybe help us get this programming up and running? Um, it's, and we're going to know them by name. So it's, it's really going to be amazing, honestly. Um, I would like to add on my thanks to the people who had the vision for this building, the people who had the passion, the dedication um, to, to really see it through to the end, and also the people that had the financial capacity uh, to support it, because I'm so excited that it's here. We're going to have some amazing outcomes uh, from this building, so thank you very much. Hello, my name is Gillian Schultz, and I too am very, very excited to be here. Um, you're going to see as each one of us speak, we're from different areas. Um, and again, looking around, look at the collaboration that can happen in spaces like this. So I'm the director of the Strategic Research Initiatives at Laurentian University, and under the direction of Dr. Rizwan Hawk, our interim vice president research, I am working with a great team of people in the new Noreen E. Purdue Central Analytical Facility. Thanks to the generous donation of the Purdue family, this is possible. It's a state-of-the-art facility, and I'm telling you it's going to have significant impact on analytical research in the years to come. In fact, I was speaking with Jamie Wallace this morning, and we sort of talked about the potential of Nobel Prizes within the next five or ten years. <laughs> So it was really just two short years ago that a group of very talented faculty and came together, volunteered their time to conceptualize what this space would look like. We dreamt big, and we considered what it would look like in 10 years. The result is 10,000 square feet of a modern laboratory space. So there's two locations on this main floor, and then on the top floor in the lime green is the centralized lab. It was a lab built by faculty for faculty, and I think this is really, really important. I would encourage everyone here to go and have a look, but specifically faculty and research students, go and have a look. See how this space could be useful in your research. How could it enhance what you're doing? How can you collaborate with your peers in this new environment? Maybe work with industry, academia, partners in this facility. The opportunities are endless. La conception de ce laboratoire prévoyait un environnement spacieux, 
robuste et climatisée, qui permettra d'améliorer la configuration et le fonctionnement des instruments dans un environnement sécuritaire pour tous. So throughout the, the planning, I think it's really important that I talk about um, what was emphasized. And faculty really had hoped for full-time staff to manage and operate, support, and enhance the services offered through a centralized concept of analytical research. So I'd like to end by formally introducing two full-time staff who are working in the facility. Dr. Alan Locke, who's the manager of the Purdue Central Analytical Facility, and Heather Cornthwaite, who's our technologist in the facility. Oh, and I see them coming here. So if they can just uh, give a wave. <clears throat> That's fantastic. So all the researchers here, these are the people you'll need to talk to. Both Al and Heather are graduates of Laurentian University. Um, and they both have a tremendous skill set that will be able to help our researchers win Nobel Prizes, enhance their research, and collaborate with our community. So thank you again to our sponsors and to everyone who conceptualized this phenomenal idea. I think the research is on an upward trajectory. Thank you. Bon matin. Mon nom est Gisèle Roberts et je suis la gérante pour l'innovation et la commercialisation ici à l'Université Laurentienne. As the lead for the Gem Fielding Innovation and Commercialization Space, my task is to ensure that we build a strong foundation to support the innovators and entrepreneurs here at Laurentian University. Someone asked me a few months ago, do you really believe that if you build it, they will come? And I've been here at Laurentian for just over 10 years, and I can tell you that they are here. Our campus is full of inventors and designers, aspiring entrepreneurs, artists, and social innovators. Il y a quatre ans, un étudiant international est rentré dans mon bureau et m'a dit qu'il se promenait sur le campus et il demandait aux gens où se trouvait le bureau de l'entrepreneuriat. Tout le monde lui répondait que cela n'existait pas. Il ne les croyait pas et a continué à demander jusqu'à ce que quelqu'un l'a dirigé dans mon bureau. Lorsque j'ai rencontré ce jeune homme, nous n'avions ni centre ni espace physique pour nos entrepreneurs. Nous avions une expertise du corps professoral, nous avions des clubs d'étudiants, ainsi que des, des ressources dans le cadre d'un programme commun avec d'autres institutions. Mais nous n'avions pas un espace physique pour nous engager, collaborer et pour les acquérir les compétences nécessaires pour parcourir le trajet de l'idéation au démarrage. Today, we celebrate the opening of this beautiful building. And in particular, in my case, the Jim Fielding Innovation and Commercialization Space just up here to, to the right as you enter the building. It's a 5,000 square foot facility dedicated to supporting our innovators and our entrepreneurs. Thanks to our generous benefactors and our funders, we now have resources to support our faculty, our students, and our staff. And we have the resources to help them develop their innovative ideas, their talent, and their skills. Our center provides spaces for socializing and meeting, co-working, spaces for learning and presenting, spaces for tinkering, innovating, sharing, collaborating, and creating. So you might wonder, other than spaces, who are we? We are mentors. We are connectors. We are part of the innovation ecosystem in Greater Sudbury. We shape, we direct, and we build. We are the foundry. We have a full house to welcome you today in the Fielding Innovation Space. You'll meet Daryl Dominic, who is up here to my right. He is our innovation and commercialization coordinator, a Laurentian alumnus from the mechanical engineering program an entrepreneur, and a previous winner of NORCAT's pitch competition. Um, he brings a wealth of knowledge to our center. Vous rencontrerez également Maren Yeshoa. Je est en haut. Bonjour, Maren. Elle est la coordinatrice du réseau des jeunes entrepreneurs de Sudbury, notre programme d'entrepreneuriat en collaboration avec le Collège Boréal et le Collège Cambrian. We all, we're also joined by members of, the, of Enactus Laurentian, a social innovation club whose mission is to create and implement community empowerment projects and business ventures in local communities. 
Finally, you'll also meet Mike Daou, founder of Green Cap Games and a Laurentian alumnus, and Casey Cayenne, a graduate student here at Laurentian and founder of Hapsis. There are entrepreneurs who have generously agreed to support us today and provide demonstrations of the technologies they are developing through their startups. We look forward to welcoming you in our space and sharing in our excitement for this important addition to our campus. Merci. So there's a lot going on. It's going to be a busy building. We would ordinarily begin uh, an event like this with, uh, with a blessing. Um, unfortunately, parking uh, was difficult. So I want to acknowledge and thank Art Patatagoose and Brandon Patatagoose for being here. I'd like to call Art uh, to the stage. Art is a, an elder from the Tikmikshing First Nation uh, and is a friend of Laurentians from a long time. Uh, not to mention the fact that both, I believe, are Laurentian alumni. So we're going to ask Art to deliver a blessing for this building. We're going to let a smudge. I'm not asking anyone for permission. This is my home. Okay. This morning, I was also invited over to my home community to gather with a group of young people who are going through this uh, idea of indigenation, indigenating. And I said to them, you know, that's a strange kind of word for me. Because that term is used to describe a journey where people who are returning home, uh, for some reason, became lost, never really connecting with the idea of home. And they wander, searching for a place to rest their feet, okay, to sleep comfortably at night, to have a place where they can dream about being able to uh, see a future where there's a potential for hope, prosperity, and to um, have a place that you can have where you can see your children right, being born also with blessed opportunity. And I, in talking with them, I said to them, you know, I sat down at one time with uh, a group of people here from Sudbury church community, and I was given a document which talked about uh, the world becoming lost and searching for a place to, to rest, to uh, ground themselves again in thinking about uh, opportunity in that future. And I said to them, you know, I'm, I'm not lost. I've been planted with seed okay, from the beginning of time. And when you get to know the grandfather teachings, what they say, okay, they provide you with that intuitive knowledge. Okay. And some people would question about the ideas related to intuition. In this school here, which is being built, okay, we're opening the doors today, inauguration, to talk about okay, having a place. Okay. This, for me, is a, is a home okay, where we can gather, not as engineers, physicists, chemists, economists, okay, but as people 
who have dreams. And when we gather together and share what we have come to learn and know, breaking down the walls helps because that allows you to become what they call today interdisciplinary, interdiscipline. We need to venture down that road more frequently because it's what we have to do today to deal with this changing technology, how it's impacting our life. At home, when we looked at that TV, the old people used to call that one the idiot box. And when they came down with that refrigerator, they talked about that one as being the stingy box. Okay. You withdrew. Okay. Very much following the ideas that we encountered. Okay. Egocentric, ethnocentric. Very destructive. And we're having to break those down. Because within our language, it tells us what we are to do. When we look at people, when we look at the single child that's being born, we say that one is sacred, pure, innocent. And we have obligation to ensure that is maintained throughout life. So when we turn and look around, the place where we live. Our boundaries don't stop at people because we include the whole of life. Inside our language, we carry these kinds of ideas. When we are born, we talk about coming into a world. We come here as a dual. There's a spiritual dimension to us. And when you look at that idea of being spiritual, we are connected with the most distant star across the vastest of the galaxies. Okay, the furthest star within the universe. We are one with that object. And when we look at people from around the land, okay, in spirit we are connected with that person as family. Okay, grandmas and grandpas, children. They are all my family, my kin. The fish, I look at them in the same way. The flowers, the plants, they are all one with me. So when I do anything that's going to be painful to another, I think about that because that's not how I am to live. Especially when I start thinking about achieving this idea of harmony. In our teaching, when we sat down with the newcomer in years gone by, we followed our teaching and our instruction. We coined this term, Shaganash. That term talks about a man coming off a boat who is sick and needing help, okay, near death. I reached out to him and took care of him. That's what we are obligated to do. That's what the law dictates in terms of how we're to behave. We continue to follow those practices, although today we're challenged become, because we are becoming distant from them. True results which come from that residential school time where our teaching was viewed as being evil, not to be having a place in this world. But as I journeyed and talked with people around the world at different times, people have come to visit. They said, what you have is what we need. The way that you have been living for the eons of time, from time immemorial. How do we ground ourselves? What do we do? When we need something, we put it in place like what we put here in this facility. I was here not long ago, roughly two years, I believe, or so, and we turned the sod to open up this place, to dedicate this space. And we were asked to participate 
And we said, yes, that would be a good idea. Because when you want to nurture something, you've got to have a place to plant the seed for it to grow and then to prosper. We see that all through life. We see it with the strawberry. We see it with the aspen poplar. When they grow, they send out those shoots and create new species, new plants. And in time, we see the uh, land becoming okay, filled okay, with their offspring, with their life. In this place here, I said that there was already a university. There was already a research center. You just have to open up your mind in order to see it because that's what we have used as our school, as our classroom. It's there. It exists. It's real. So when we build a facility, it's like building a wigwam, putting a roof over your head, making a place of comfort so that you can do your work in a place which is secure where you want to see harmony. And it requires that we conduct ourselves in a way which encourages that kind of living, that way of being. That's what we see here in terms of opportunity for the future. When we think about the youth at home this morning and talking with them, I was saying to them, you know, we have to change the way that we think because we are becoming extinct in our own house. We have to speak in the way our grandfather spoke, to say that this is our house. Because that history makes that clear, secures that vision. I am the landlord, yes. That's the way it is in Canada. I was talking and talking with the, uh, the youth this morning. I said, you know something strange? There's a book that's been written, and it's written by an American from the Cherokee Nation. In coming to Canada to teach, he took out Canadian citizenship. Okay? Kind of strange that this would happen today. Because if I go across the border into the United States, I don't take out citizenship. I am automatically a citizen of North America, citizen of the United States. That's the difference. Okay. I'm treated differently in one home or the other. Homes which have come to be placed in my living room, Canada and the United States. And I'm saying to Canada and the United States today, come and sit down with me. You have to go back and relearn the history because what you are teaching people is not real, not honest, not truthful. You have to live up your up to your obligations that you have entered, entered with me in terms of what we did when we sat down to make this place your home and mine. I opened up my door to you. I gave you a place to put your blanket, a place for you to prosper. And you have become extremely prosperous. And when I take a look at my family, I don't see as much in terms of the physical side. But inside my home, you can't measure the value in terms of dollars of what's there because it's filled with the beauty of spirit and life. Something which is comes, coming from those teachings, the grounding about keeping your sense of being, about what it means to be human. So I'll share that with you. And my son is going to sing a song. It's going to be the flag song which opens up and dedicates this space. But this space here, I dedicated already this morning when I smoked that pipe with the people that were there. And I saw something very strange this morning when I woke up. In my yard sitting on the ground, I saw a white crow. That one didn't exist, but that one has chosen to live where I live. 
And maybe that's a sign about opportunity, that this crow has emerged at this time to give us those signs. Because that's what I ask from time to time. Dear Creator, show me those little signs that you are here with us and that I'm to maintain a relationship with you that's going to guide me and keep me well. I have to follow those teachings because that's who I am. And I will continue to do so as long as I am blessed with life. So dear Creator, we pray that you will be there always as you have indicated from the beginning that you are with us. It's only in taking time to sit with you and opening up my eyes and then my heart and my spirit. When I do that, I know that you will be coming and you will come and sit with me to guide me and teach me. It has always been that way. And it's for us to come to learn and understand and to live. So dear Creator, I thank you for being there to, to listen to my words this morning and to gather with this beautiful people here, this beautiful gathering of people with dreams for a future. Oh, miigwech. Ah, uh, bonjour. And then we mag na dak miigwech ki bishayek. Kijena ben de go. Take make shing and don't jaba. Mashkos and dem. So I welcomed you all today as my relatives, just as my father was speaking. You're related to uh, everything that's out there. Not just you, my, my relatives, but that tree, the deer that gave its life for this drum, the tree, and everything else, the water. I'm related to it all. It's, uh, it's my family. It's, uh, I am the land. It's where I come from. This land, Tikamikshing, this is where my ancestors were buried. I have uh, ancestral ties to this territory. And so I, uh, I welcome you all today. And I thank you for being here. I belong to the Elk Clan. And my uh, spirit name is the, the Kind Man. <clears throat> and today, I'm just going to share a, uh, a song for you. It's a honor song, flag song. Uh, Canadians or nations from all around the world, they have their own nation songs. Well, this is our song. We actually have a couple of anthems, but, so I'm going to share that with you. <clears throat> Hey, 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 hey,
And thank you all for standing for this song and our, uh, <coughs> our belief that was the Eagle Staff. That's our flag, our Canadian, or, uh, Canada, you have your uh, nation's flag. Our flag is the Eagle Staff and it's represented when we look in the sky at night and we see something familiar, um, some call it the Big Dipper, but to us that's the Eagle Staff in the sky looking down on us. So we, uh, it's a lot of honor for uh, anyone to be able to share that song. So I thank you for that honor. So Chimi Gwech Art, Chimi Gwech Brandon, many thank yous for the song and the blessing. So there's a lot to be proud of, there's a lot to be thankful for. And critically, I think we must recognize that this is for the students. This will make the students better. This will make our world better. And we're very proud to be here. So, I would like to now invite those of you who received a letter saying that you were part of a photograph. Up to the top of those stairs over there, we'll be, we will be proceeding with those photographs. I would like all the rest of the folks who gathered here today to please continue exploring this facility. Take the time to look and see what we've created here, what we've created for this community. Take the time to ask questions about what exists here and how you can interact with that, and please enjoy. We'd like to welcome you again as you take advantage of our services and joining us for future annou announcements, but for the time being, please enjoy the facilities. For those of you who took advantage of our shuttle service, the shuttle back will be back to your vehicles departing every 15 minutes on the hour from the courtyard here until 12.30. Our sincere thanks and appreciation to Science North for helping us out in this particular regard. And again, thank you to the federal government for the funding and for the party. <laughs> Enjoy. Enjoy.